All right, guys, it's what you've been waiting for, the top five worst defenders of science on social media. I got into looking at the people you guys recommended and I realized I actually have to make two lists. So I made two lists, the first being celebrity offenders of science, the second being people in the fitness industry. We've got in my hands the list of the top five worst offenders of science in the fitness industry. But before we get into that, I have to talk about our honorable mentions because there were some great names on this list that just didn't quite make it. So here are our honorable mentions. Ashy Vines. Miss, you can shut down the Krebs cycle by using keto. Logan Fusion Lean, who claims you can cure brain cancer with the ketogenic diet. Uh, spoiler alert, uh, keto is not a cure for cancer. In some studies, in certain cancers, it may have some benefits. It is not a cure. Ash Nordman, my personal favorite. It's very hard for me to keep her off this list. Uh, Miss Perfumes are going to give you cancer. Mark Hyman, Paleo Pete Evans, also, another, if you can tell this is a trend, claims you can cure cancer with da 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 keto. V Shred, I think his, I think it may be Vince something. Like, I actually didn't bother to look up the name because it was just too much. Brandon Carter, another keto, keto zealot, and I think I watched a video with uh, Elgin Intensity talking about him. I, I believe it was him, and please correct me if, I was, if I'm wrong. He actually staged a fake fight with another YouTuber to get a bigger YouTube following, and then actually ended up getting arrested or stopped by police or something. It's pretty funny. Jen Selter, Thomas DeLauer. So hard for me not to put this guy on this list. Ironically, a week ago, Thomas actually emailed me to collaborate uh, He's actually always been nice to me whenever we've interacted. It doesn't change the fact that I think his claims are ridiculous. Uh, but yeah, actually emailed me to collaborate and I said that I thought that probably wasn't a good idea. Uh, Dr. Josh Axe, Nate Diesel. Uh, Nate also thinks the world is flat. Um, if you've ever read into, into any of the uh, flat earth people, pretty hilarious. Um, they think that Australia doesn't exist and that when people fly over there, they're actually just flying somewhere on the flat earth and they're all actors. All Australians are actors. I can confirm. Michael Morelli, Mike Dolce, Vegan Gains, oh, Vegan Gains is wonderful, The Paleo Mom, and Brittany Dawn Fitness. All right, now with that being said, let's get into our Top five. Our first person on the list was by far the most mentioned person in the comments section when I first asked for nominees. And I gotta be honest, it's gonna be hard for me not to tip my hand on some of these in terms of who I think are the worst. And I'm just gonna come right out and say, I, I don't think this person is the worst. In fact, I had a hard time putting him on the list, but he had so many votes and he's cringy enough that I, I think I can. Uh, Greg O'Gallagher. My life has finally exceeded my wildest dreams. And I can't help but ask myself, how the hell did I get here? I started from scratch. I created a whole new workout approach. I studied our ancestors. I studied old training journals and research. I put together a completely new nutritional protocol. I went completely against the grain. Or Kino Body. He was tagged a lot. As far as claims go, I, I can tell you I don't think he's the worst out there. He basically promotes intermittent fasting, but the rub is that he sells intermittent fasting as a lifestyle that it's, it's kind of like the old beer commercials where like you pop a, bu a Budweiser at the beach and a bunch of hot girls in bikinis come around you so that like selling you that if you drink alcohol you get hot women. He's kind of selling that if you do intermittent fasting you make you a superhero and I think he actually referred to himself as the real life Bruce Wayne. So from what I saw, it's just his advertising is pretty cringy, but it seems to be working. There was a really interesting article. Some guy uh, hired him to help him lose weight. And I think the title of the article was how I hired the douchiest uh, person in fitness to help me lose weight or something like that. But I don't know, Greg, he may be perfectly fine, uh, but he made the list because he got commented on so much and because he is kind of, the marketing is a little bit over the top. Our next one, Paige Hathaway. Now, 
Again, this is another one where I didn't think her claims were incredibly over the top, but she has such a large following that I put more emphasis on that. Uh, one of the biggest ones I saw was she claimed that a supplement that she was promoting could help cure a heavy metal poisoning that we get through our water and this sort of stuff. And it has uh, spirulina and some other um, compounds from fungi. Well, I looked into this research and mostly what these algae compounds are used for is uh, they do they do bind to heavy metals, but they're used in aqueous solutions So they're used in like water decontamination and that sort of thing or if people are trying to purify different chemicals Some of the studies in in living organisms were pretty ambivalent There was one that showed it uh, had no effect on cadmium poisoning But there was another that did show rats that were injected with lead uh, with lead acetate and they supplemented with spirulina Actually had lower levels of lead than rats that weren't supplemented. Okay. Here's the rub. It was over four times the dose that you get in the supplement that she's selling. And basically when I looked at Paige Hathaway, I mean, she promotes waist trainers, organic coffee, pretty much looks like, you know, her sponsors. It just seems to be kind of the, the, the original basic Fitzbo account. I wouldn't put this as my, like my worst offender of science. It's just that she has such a large following, influences so many people. And I think some of these claims are, are, are kind of ridiculous. And I really don't like the fear mongering around heavy metal poisoning. Ben Greenfield. <laughs> Technically the legality of what we're about to do is pretty fringe. flabbergasted by the number of people who navigate through life with brain fog and with digestive issues, with poor sleep, and they're simply not operating at the full capacity of what a human being should be able to operate at. This is another quote unquote biohacker. Uh, I believe Ben was uh, formerly an athlete. He's been on a lot of podcasts. He's been on uh, my friend's Mind Pump. Uh, he's been on the Joe Rogan Experience. Uh, so he has a pretty big following. Uh, one of the ones that, that's interesting about him is he injects his own stem cells. Now, I was actually just at a, an actual longevity clinic a couple weeks ago, and one of the things that they said was that injections of your own stem cells are usually not that effective. You really need um, specific stem cells. And even when I, like I was actually had a hip injury years ago, where I talked about getting, I thought about getting stem cell injections, and the doctor said, hey, it's like, it's a crapshoot whether or not it works. And for some people, it seems to just be um, placebo. He also has some really dubious claims about uh, cancer. Um, you know, he, he, he promotes alternative therapies, and I really have a problem with this whole, like, traditional cancer therapy has failed us. One of the articles, why you've been lied to about cancer, what you can do about it. There's a two times greater risk of cancer for people who seek out alternative therapies versus those who get traditional therapies. I'm not saying you shouldn't try to modify your diet. I'm not saying that there might be other things that can't be effective, but it should not ever take the place of the standard of care. Currently, when people seek out alternative treatments, they usually don't do the standard of care. So it's troubling that he promotes this. He's also uh, anti-vaccine, and he's had, uh, even had breathitarians on his podcast who, I get these are people who believe like they don't need uh, anything, that they can just get everything they need from the sun and the air. A lot of really dubious claims from him, and especially the, the really troubling part for him is he claims to be very, very evidence-based. While there are some things that I guess you consider cutting edge, there's very little that he promotes that's actually supported by science. Dr. Eric Berg. Hey, it's Dr. Berg here. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to raise testosterone in men. Eric Berg is not a physician. Hey, it's Dr. Berg here. Hey, it's Dr. Berg here. So. <laughs> he promotes DR in front of his name, but he's not a physician, even though a lot of people seem to appear to think he is. And he's a low carb zealot. And one of my favorite uh, quotes from him, or one of his favorite claims, he had a, a post on Instagram where he said, what the biggest reason you're not losing weight on keto is because you're not fasting correctly. You're not intermittent fasting correctly. Yeah, it couldn't possibly be that they're eating, you know, an extra thousand calories from butter per day, because apparently butter is fine for you. No, it's it's because they aren't fasting long enough. Well, I guess if they fast for most of the day and don't eat, that creates what we call caloric restriction, 
and you can lose weight. This whole, the entire carbohydrate insulin hypothesis has been disproven so many times over. And I've talked about it in most of my videos. I talk about it in my ebook, Fat Loss Forever. There's quite a few research studies that have shown that you can lose the same amount of weight even though one diet has higher insulin levels. And there's actually the biggest nail in the carbohydrate insulin model of obesity, I think, is there's a drug out there that you can take that increases, uh, it's a GLP-1 mimic, and it causes you to release more insulin. It also causes fat loss. So if insulin causes fat gain, is the primary driver of fat gain, how can a drug that significantly increases insulin also cause fat loss? It doesn't vibe. Sorry, all calories matter. Finally, uh, Jason Fung, Dr. Jason Fung. Three of the most influential human beings in the history of the world all agreed on one thing. It's the most powerful natural healing solution ever. One that's been used by all cultures all over the world and one that's virtually forgotten today. What am I talking about? Fasting. <laughs> He had a book called The Obesity Code, and it's basically the same story, another low-carb zealot. He is a kidney specialist, and I think people have a really, there are good doctors out there with regards to nutrition, and when I say doctors, I mean physicians. But physicians inherently do not get a lot of nutrition education, and Dr. Fung makes some really dubious claims in, in his book, and he also kind of made a post where he basically implied that his clients have never needed uh, loose skin surgery because they do intermittent fasting. That if you intermittent fast, uh, maybe you won't need, maybe you won't have loose skin. There's no evidence that intermittent fasting is superior for weight loss, none. If you equate calories, intermittent fasting produces the same amount of weight loss as non-intermittent fasting. Now, there is evidence that some people, perhaps it's a personality thing, do better with what we call time-restricted eating or intermittent fasting, but it's not magic. They only do better because it's easier for them to create a calorie deficit. Finally, Fung has also claimed caloric restriction increases anabolic hormones. That's not true. Uh, perhaps if you're extremely obese and you lose weight to get back to normal, maybe your testosterone goes up a little bit, but anabolic hormones like insulin, testosterone, both of those drop during caloric restriction. Growth hormone can rise during periods, but growth hormone is not anabolic. Despite the name growth hormone, growth hormone does not cause increases in skeletal muscle hypertrophy, even when injected. It increases total body water and it increases connective tissue mass. It does not increase skeletal muscle mass. And in fact, people who have uh, acromelagy, which is they secrete growth hormone way too much, uh, they do not have more muscle mass for their height than a normal person. So sorry, growth hormone not anabolic. All right guys, there's the top five worst offenders of science in the fitness industry. Now I need you guys to vote on your top offender of science. Off this list of five, I need you to comment below and tell me who you think the worst offender of science is. All right, guys, I'm looking forward to your votes. I'm out.